of the North Suburban Beat, we find out about school sports coverage here at CTV. We meet the new undersheriff who acts as a chief of police for four of our cities. But first, we sample some goodies at the Taste of Northwest Youth and Family Services. Welcome to the North Suburban Beat with Steve Hahn. I'm Neil Bellagio. Thank you for joining us. Northwest Youth and Family Services coordinate social and mental health aid throughout our 10 cities. Once a year, they come together to have some fun, meet local chefs, and to also raise some money. Uh, the event is an evening of food and fun and fellowship. Aid to raise money for such a good cause also. Mm -hmm. We are lucky to have such vibrant institutions here in our northern suburbs. One of the other amenities we treasure is our access to the great outdoors. And that's right, Steve. And biking is becoming a very popular way to enjoy it. And you might have noticed people riding on some bright green bicycles in our area. Or maybe you've seen the new stations for these bikes across from the fairgrounds and on the university campus. Yeah, Neil, you can find out lots about the nice ride at their website. Just go to our links for the beat at ctvnorthsuburbs.org slash nsb. They have links to lots of handy sites about biking and an app to download your mobile device with all the information about nice ride stations. And there's even a couple places you can have some input into the future of biking in our area. The state of Minnesota is creating a new bicycle map and wants your input. The 2013 Minnesota Bicycle Map will provide route information for bicyclists who want to travel to any part of the state. This map is meant for bicyclists traveling long distances in all parts of Minnesota. It will be an electronic, printable map that can easily be updated in the future. And you can let them know what you'd like to see. Just go to their website at ctvnorthsuburbs.org slash nsb. Arden Hills, North Oaks, Little Canada, and Shoreview all contract with the Ramsey County's Sheriff's Department for police services. And those patrols report to the new undersheriff, Jack Shareer. An undersheriff is a division director, uh, kind of in the corporate term. Um, so um, there's four undersheriffs within the Ramsey County Sheriff's Office, and I head up the Public Safety Services Division. I really want to make sure that people know that those are things, those are the standards that we, we ask you to hold us to, and we also hold ourselves to each and every day. And speaking of buses, Neil, the next generation of hybrid electric public transit buses was unveiled at the Minnesota State Fair this year. The buses have strong Minnesota connections. They were built in the state and will be operated by Metro Transit, Minnesota's largest transit provider. Funded by a $1.2 million federal grant, the two new hybrid electric buses represent a first for the U.S. transit industry. Systems on these buses, including air compressor, heating and cooling, and power steering, are all run directly from the hybrid's powerful battery, resulting in additional fuel savings, reduced emissions, and other benefits. The new bus model can also operate in an all-electric mode, providing whisper-quiet emission-free travel for short durations. Metro Transit first added a hybrid bus to its fleet in 2002, one of the earliest U.S. transit agencies to do so. Today, the agency operates 97 hybrid electric buses, and about 11, that's about 11% 11 of its fleet. The next generation buses were manufactured by New Flyer at the company's plant in St. Cloud. Many of the systems are components on the buses were manufactured by companies with a strong presence in Minnesota, such as BAE, Thermal King, and Cummings. Metro Transit is a service of the Metropolitan Council. In 2011, Neil, customers boarded Metro Transit buses and trains, believe it or not, 81 million times. Wow. Throughout this nation and here in the state of Minnesota, the sex trafficking of children is of growing concern to law enforcement and our local community. In almost every recent case involving child sex trafficking in the state of Minnesota, the illegal transaction begins on Backpage.com and then ends up at a local hotel or motel in our community, oftentimes in a suburban location. Ramsey County law enforcement leaders, representatives from the lodging industry and advocacy organizations met in Roseville to announce the details of a new initiative and partnership to combat sex trafficking in Ramsey County and beyond. Prostitution is not a victimless crime. 
It's not a business transaction between two people. Sex trafficking of our children, and we thank and applaud each and every one of you. Neil, here's a handy tip for those residents heading south for the winter or off to college in another state. If your Minnesota driver's license is due to be renewed in 2013, did you know you can take care of it ahead of time and lose no coverage? Renewing early ensues that a driver's license displays a current photo and a resident address. It also provides drivers peace of mind and a valid license while they are away from home. The early renewal service is also available to identification card holders and for out-of-state students and snowbirds. Driver's licenses may be mailed to an optional mailing address provided on the application and one that differs from the Minnesota resident address printed on the card. To complete an early renewal, visit Roosevelt's License Center at 2737 Lexington Avenue or if you have questions, call 651-792-7010. Back to school also means more coverage of high school and college sports, Neil, here at CTV. Did you know sports have their own channel here? In fact, Channel 14 dedicates Thursday through Sunday to sports programs from our productions and those other access centers who cover our teams. Well, it's a night for the Cardinals, and they're going to, again, we, we talked about they might not be as, as big up front, but they're going to try and be athletic and move quickly. You can check out all the live coverage and playback schedules at ctvnorthsuburbs.org. Just check under the Schedules tab. There's definitely tons of local sports covers going on here, and uh, yeah. it's just a lot of fun to do that. I know, because I'm on the 95% mm -hmm. of, well, not wow. that high, not that high. Probably only like 20%, but I do a lot of sports coverage, right. and you know, Steve, it, I love being a part of those crews, and we're always training new volunteers to handle cameras, audio, and replay equipment, and you can find out lots about our classes and the free orientation class at ctvnorthsuburbs.org. If you are looking forward to this year's elections, but you're not quite sure just who all those people are on the ballot, you can now find out about the candidates for positions like judge and conservation commissioner at one handy place. The Nonpartisan League of Women Voters is excited to announce the redesign of their vote411.org website. You can find your polling place, which might have changed after the redistricting, find out who will be on the ballot, and get their answers to questions on many issues all in one place. You can even get information on registering to vote, and it's all organized in a way that makes it easy to navigate. Go to the vote411.org site directly, or you can link it to our page at ctvnorthsuburbs.org NSB. Well, Neil, that's this edition of our local news. What do you say we take a look at the community calendar now? Sounds good to me. Okay. Join your friends at the Roseville Harriet Alexander Nature Center for a Wild Rice Festival on Saturday, September 15th. It's a community celebration of wild rice, Native American culture, and Minnesota's fall season. The fun begins at 8 a.m. with a fundraising pancake breakfast that will be served until 11 a.m. that day. Then enjoy the day with free family fun. Learn about foods harvested in the fall, natural history, and traditional cultures of Minnesota. You can see wild ricing and apple cider demonstrations and listen to Native American music or enjoy tasty wild rice treats and bid on items in the silent auction. The fun lasts until 4 p.m. and is located at 2520 North Dale Street, north of Highway 36 in Roseville. It includes 52 acres of marsh, prairie, and forest habitats. And get more information at 651-765-4262 or www.wildricefestival.org. Do you want to participate in Roseville's Guinness World Record attempt for the largest mobile phone gaming party? Well, join us on Saturday, September 15th at the Guidant John Rolls Minnesota Oval. Gates open at 9 a.m. and the will be world record attempt at noon. For more information, check us out on our Roseville Facebook page or our website at www.visitroseville.com. Volunteers are welcome. The City of Halkin Heights and the City of Lauderdale are teaming up again for the third annual Family 5K Fun Run Walk event. You can take pleasure in some morning exercise, neighborly conversations, and support your local park system. 
meet Saturday, September 29th at Community Park, 2050 Rose Lawn. Race day registration and check-in will begin at 7 a.m. sharp. The fun run and walk begins at 8 a.m. There are small fees, group discounts, and a guaranteed running t-shirt, Neil. New Brighton Parks and Recreation invites you to Thrive Adult 55 Plus Expo on Thursday, September 27th from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Held at the New Brighton Community Center, this day includes exhibitors, health assessments, aging well breakout sessions, and fitness demonstrations, including a pickleball demo are all part of this informative afternoon designed specifically for older adults and all free. Great door prizes and light refreshments are available and you are invited to bring a friend. And that's it for this edition of the North Suburban Beat. If you have a story idea for this program, you can call 651-792-7523. You can also view us online at ctvnorthsuburbs.org slash nsb complete with all the links we mentioned in this show. With Steve Hahn, it's always a pleasure to be here with you. I'm Neil Bellagio. Thank you for watching the North Suburban Beat.